Well, greetings everyone. Welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. In this video, we have another IC Station goodie. This is a, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, XC, I guess. Whatever, audio. This is a TDA 2050 mono amplifier board. It's pretty standard, not much about it. One thing that is neat about this board that kind of stuck out to me is most of it is all surface mount. But another thing that sticks out is the TDA 2050 was killed like, I don't know, six or seven years ago. So I wonder how the authenticity of this chip is, considering I'm just, you know, rubbing the lettering right off of it. You can barely even see it anymore. Huh. We're going to do a whole line of things. We're, of course, going to do the standard scope it with the power test, the sound quality test, which won't come very well through the microphone on the camera. Uh, already said power test. And then I'll try the torture test, which is the overheat, overcurrent, and short circuit um, little test. Now, another thing that I think is cool with this board is this is actually running off of a single rail. Which means this capacitor right here, the one that's closer to the heatsink, that's our output capacitor. So it's a capacitor coupled output. Now the TDA 2030 and 50 can be ran in um, single rail supplies. However, your output power is drastically reduced. Even the TDA 2050 on single rail had very low power. I think it was like only like 15 watts at 30 volts. So, um, I guess we'll just begin with um, testing this thing. I'm going to look over at all these parts, and maybe I'll post a schematic over top of the video right now, if I uh, actually do that. So, if I do post a schematic, here it is. Pause and look at it. If not, then we'll get on to doing this. So, our audio in, it's of course just mono. So, our audio in is these screw terminals. Well, lucky for me, I have this 3.5 millimeter to bare wire breakout board that I'm going to have to attach. These screw terminals look like the, the top of the screws are the kind that's the wrong head. They look like that soft aluminum that if you try to tighten something too much, it will um, bend. And of course, our input is the only one left, which looking at the bottom of the board goes directly into the potentiometer. Is the potentiometer logarithmic or linear? I don't know. Although I will say, as the time of I'm recording this video, I've had this board for like two weeks. It's another thing I haven't had no time with because I have been tied up with another project. Let me give you a quick demo or sneak of what that project's been. If one realistic wasn't enough, let's get another. This is an SCT-31. Look at the level meter. Long story short, a buddy of mine wants me to build up an amplifier and he wanted some level meters. I told him the best way to get those is pull them off of a tape deck since my, my realistic deck used a pair of ICs. This does not. It's driven from an op amp, which I'm pretty sure is turning the line signal into a PWM, which is driving the meters. Blah. I don't want to mess with it. Might be better just to repair the belts in that deck and use it because it is in mint condition. Other than some dirt, of course. Okay, and so I have the horribly outdated Kindle with some YouTube safe music. Well, I do once I unlock it. Okay. Now this has only got one speaker output. So uh, we'll hook up one speaker. Which speaker should I hook up? I don't know. Now the audio out plus and minus is kind of tricky to see. Because it's right down here in between our terminal block and our cap. And I also just noticed this is actually two separate terminal blocks. Not like a solid four. I still say the terminal blocks on this TDA board, TPA my bad, are the best blocks I've ever seen in my life. Now the DCN is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's the same orientation as its filter filter capacitor. Then you can also look right underneath the board. Here's a ground plane and here's our supply which goes into pin 5 of the 
the chip. So I need to yet again rob the power cable from my TPA board. Okay, we have it wired up. We're gonna do a first, well, first power on for the video. I've been using this board for about a week. It's been sitting for a while. Let's go ahead and power it on at a pretty modest 12 volts. Oh, my, my speakers are four ohms. So there's a four ohm load on the amplifier plus whatever the junky CCA wire comes with. It's resistance, I mean. So there's no kind of power indicator on here and the volume knob is just a knob. There's no kind of switch at all. So I went to the YouTube audio library, which has its own channel. I found a song that I thought sounded pretty decent. So let's make sure this is turned up and we'll just play it. Oh, that sounds weird, there's only one speaker. Clips really easy. And again, it's only 12 volts. It's a single ended amplifier, non non bridge, answering in cap couple mode. There we go, we're already clipping it. Okay, so we don't get an awful lot of power through 4 ohms, 12 volts. So, um, I'm not going to fool around. I'm going to turn my supply all the way up to its maximum, which should be just off of 20 volts. Up you go. 21, whoops. Yeah, that'll fall to about 20 when you get any more than about an amp on it. Don't you love linear supplies? So we was clipping at about the halfway point on the knob at 12 volts. Let's see where we clip at on 20. Let's just go and say 20 volt. <sighs> Sounds like we're starting to clip about three quarters of the way up. And it's barely getting warm too. Whoopsie. Sound quality is average. It's nothing special. It doesn't sound bad, but it's not the best thing I've ever heard either. That's usable. So I'm going um, to go back to the speaker shot and let's see how it sounds with some different types of music. Have to be careful because this will probably all be copyrighted. Oh, and I will be keeping it at 20 volt supply to try to get the most power, even though the camera is just going to auto level. So what's the point? <laughs> Okay, so that concludes our little sound demo. <clears throat> As I said, it sounds fine. It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound like the best thing ever. It's listenable. So, here we are with the power test. I have a one kilohertz sine wave going into it. I should probably drop my volts per division. Ouch. Now I'm going to test at a variety of voltages at four and eight ohm loads. 
I'm not going to show them all on video, but I'll stick a, a sheet at the end of the video and show my results for every test. But the first one I will show on video is we're running 8 ohms. What voltage are we running? I think we're, I don't even know what we're running. We're at 14. Let's tune this down to as close as I can get it to 12. We're at 14. Let's try to get close to 12 here. 12.01. Good enough. 12.01 volts into an 8 ohm load. 1 kilohertz sine wave test. Ooh, we start to clip at the top rail first. See that? Okay, so let's see our my poor linear supply over there. Why are you buzzing so aggressively? Okay, so it looks like our maximum clean voltage is 2.53 volts. 2.53 volts into 8 ohms comes to what? Oh. Volts RMS 2.53. 2.53 volts. That is only coming out to 800 milliwatts. 800. I've seen headphone amplifiers with more power than that. Am I missing something? Nope. Volt min max is good. Our peak to peak, we don't measure peak to peak for audio, we measure our. I don't believe that. 4 ohms, 12 volts. Again, we're clipping at the top rail. We're only getting about 2.3 volts clean. We're getting 1.3 watts. Okay, I'm going to cut the camera off. I'm going to test 4 and 8 ohms on a wide variety of voltages. Voltage ratings will be tested at the amp. So remember when I said my power supply doesn't go past 21 volts? I thought of a way to test this at 35, which is the max rating of the capacitors. By the way, there is an over-first polarity protection, so be careful. The solution to getting the higher voltage is something so simple, I can't believe I never thought of it. A DC to DC boost converter. Now, these are going to be running at higher voltages, so I will be recording this whole time. I'll just chop it up and edit. But, uh... So if it does explode, it'll be on video. So it hasn't blown up, and I'm pretty sure it's set to 24 volts right now. Check. Yep, 24.0. And again, when I do the power test, voltages is taken from the amp board. Okay, let's begin. I noticed something pretty neat when you turn it on and off during full load. Right now, we are all the way up, running at 28 volts. I shut my main supply off. We lose our signal. We turn it back on. We don't get our bottom rail right away. Hmm. Okay. Just shut that off, because this thing's scaring me. I feel like it's about to... Oh! got hot quick. I was at a uh, 4 ohms too. What's funny is I just went to my emails to get the uh, product link for this amplifier board and it's suddenly not available. Right. Let's look at my power test results. There you go. There's your results with the IC station TDA 2050 mono amplifier board. This is bugging me that it's not centered. Okay. That's also still bugging me. Okay. Right, so, um, the reason 32 volts and 35 is blank is I actually, the board doesn't have enough gain. Going through my tablet at full volume, I was not able to run it to clipping past 28 volts. At 28 volts, I think I was just at the edge of it. However, looking at these numbers, I don't think we're missing much. It looks like this amplifier is really meant for the 20 volt plus operation. Just because look at the small number increases, and then we start just making big leaps, especially here at um, uh, 4 ohms. 4 volts got us another 3 watts. Yeah, all the way down to 3.3 volts, we got 0 0.002 watts into 8 ohms. 5, 7.5, 9, 12, 
just the most common voltages. And the reason I went 35 as my max is that's what the filter cap is rated for on the um, HIPAA Fireboard. Now, the real 2050 can go to, what is it, plus and minus 30, I think? So that means, in theory, when you run it in a single rail capacitor coupled, you should be able to go to 60 volts. Well, no one really does that, but it is possible, I guess. So, yes, there's the results. Not very impressed with that at all. So, there we have the little demo and power test of the IC station. Probably fake TDA 2050 chip. Uh, do I recommend this board? Well, considering you can't find it on their site anymore. And it seemed to do very weak in the power test. Now, I do get these chips aren't meant for the low voltage. But even on um, single supply, it should be putting out more power than that. But I think now the only thing left to do is the torture test. I'm too lazy. I don't want to sit here and wait for this thing to heat up to do the over temperature. So I think we're just going to skip ahead to everybody's favorite part, the short circuit test. Now, since it may blow bits everywhere, I am... Um, I'm probably going to hide behind a chair or something. What I'm going to do is I'm pretty much just going to have it hooked up to my 8 ohm dummy load. And then I'm just going to straight grab a pair of jumpers and short across the output. Yeah, I think I'll hook the scope to it as well. Just to see if anything happens. We'll see it. Okay, here we're set up. Got the power supply set to 21 volts. I took out the, the boost converter. As you see, we have output. Let's go ahead and give it about, I don't know, about half volume or so. Okay. Let's zoom this out so if things goes boom, we'll see it. Short circuit test. In three, two, one. It whines at you. Ooh. Does that, does that oscillate? Hold up. Let's go down to 50 microseconds per division. Let's look at that again. I think that oscillates. So I don't know if you can hear, but when it shorts, there's actually a whining noise. Wow! That is hot. Yeah, that's a little warm for uh, human fingers. And I just turned it on. Well, it's obviously oscillating, but I don't know if it's got some kind of a current limit. It makes me wonder, this may be a real chip. However, wow, that got hot quick. Because I just turned it on like a minute ago. Well, I'm, hmm. I don't want to say it passed a short circuit test because it oscillated and got extremely hot. But... Oh well, this was a fun video nonetheless, so if you guys did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Maybe I should keep this short and see if it blows up, because wow, that's hot.